Welcome to Eurodollar University with Jeff Snyder. My name is Emil Kalinowski, and today we're going to be talking about the U.S. Treasury curve inversion because recently, just a week or two ago, the Federal Reserve published a working paper that said you don't really have to worry about the Treasury curve inversion until it finally does something, like until it's very deeply inverted. Jeff, we're going to be going over an article titled Spreading Inversion. Now, normally I would tell people where they can find this, but you've changed jobs recently. You are now the st chief strategist at Atlas Financial. So tell us where can people read what we're going to be going over? Well, you can go to marketsinsiderpro.com and for a limited time, you can get it, you sign up with your email, you get it delivered to your inbox for free as part of a multifaceted research service that we're putting together. And when, when I say we, I mean, Mr. Stephen Van Meter, who will give you his market momentum timer pro and Ms. Tracy Shukart, which people uh, I think probably know from her Twitter handle. She's going to be adding a weekly oil and gas trading uh, uh, product to and I have a couple of research products there, something called the Money and Macro Pro Daily Briefing, which is something brand new that I'm doing, as well as the weekly Money and Macro Pro Deep Dive, which is kind of the same thing that I used to put on the old blog posts that people used to read. So if you want to get the stuff that I used to do, along with a, a bunch of other things, go to marketsinsiderpro.com and sign up there. And you can get for, for a limited time, you can get all the stuff for free. Working paper published July 6th by the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Here's what it said. While most previous studies focus on the predictive power of the spread between the long and short maturity yields, 10 year, three month, 10 year, two year. Recently, a couple of economists and researchers have shown that a measure of the nominal near-term forward spread, Jeff, you'll have to tell us what that means, given by the difference between the six quarter ahead forward treasury yield, I'm losing it, Jeff, I'm losing, I don't understand what they're saying, and the current three month treasury bill rate dominates long-term spreads as a leading indicator of economic activity. Jeff, what are they saying headline? <laughs> what are they saying between the lines? And then we'll tell the Eurodollar University version of it all. What they're saying is, yes, we saw the yield curve uh, invert in March, just like we saw the yield curve invert in August of 2019. But it was those longer end spreads between the two year and the 10 year. Throw those out. We don't care about those because we're only looking at the short end yield curve for various reasons. And these various reasons tell us that the short-term spreads, and some of them are not the spreads that you think of, these, these uh, forward-looking spreads are essentially bootstrap predictions, forward-looking markets like I o or o or OIS, you know, the, option, uh, the overnight index swaps market, things like that, that tell us what the market might think the Federal Reserve rates or short-term rates are going to be at certain points in the future. And we're going to compare what the market thinks those certain uh, Federal Reserve rates in the future are going to be to where they are now. And if they're upside down, then we'll worry. But until this short end of the yield curve, short end of the money curve, a section of everything, until that actually inverts, we're going to ignore everything else because in our study here, we believe it's this short-term forward OIS stuff that determines whether or not or where we're going to go from there. The long end, pfft, who cares? That's the headline. Tell me if I've got the between the lines correctly, Jeff. The between the lines is and that more important short-term inversion that the thing that is in the future OIS hasn't inverted, so don't worry about any recession. We've got it under control these market headlines are for the masses, for the people who watch CNBC. <laughs> you want to be in on the real knowledge? You listen to us. Is that right, Jeff? Yeah, and I, I think it's it's something like that, but it's more along the lines of, you know, that's for market people and you know whatever. The, this 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 academic stuff at the front. This is for us. This academic you know academic scholarship is looking at curves and forward curves and putting them into mathematical formulas and comparing them to various things. That's our language. That's what we do. And, it's, and we're looking at uh, monetary rates that are tied directly to the Fed. And we, I mean, the Fed is everything for us. Right. So if it's a right. Fed rate and if it's a forward Fed rate, 
We're going to pay attention to that because fed, 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 fed. Now, Jeff, we've done shows before, and it's right there in the title of this, Spreading Inversion. So, it's, isn't the pattern that we have an inversion somewhere out there in the future in these longer terms? And then that should be a concern, an orange light, a yellow light, and then it spreads, it infects, it gets closer and closer to the core. I think there was a poem about this, the center cannot hold, the, the disorder comes from outside and it moves in. And Jeff, so they're saying don't pay attention until it gets close to the inner workings. And, I, and then you say, okay, fine, we'll give you that. But guess what's happening? The inversion has moved very, very close to the inside, what you look at. Is that right? Yeah, the inversion moves. It's not static. It's not a one-time thing. It's all over the place. And as you said, Emil, you can actually see it kind of roll further and further up the curve through time. And so their argument is essentially that, yeah, we recognize that it starts at the long end and then kind of progresses. Remember your retching cat uh, image. That's kind of what happens here. It starts way down the curve and then it moves forward and forward and forward and forward until it gets to the front and then they pay attention to it. And the argument that they put forward in the study is that between this long end inversion where it starts and the short end inversion where they actually start paying attention, and they, I mean economists and central bankers, what they're saying is that in that in interim period between before the long end inversion gets to the short end, the Fed actually has the ability to intervene at that point because it's Fed, 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 right? And so if the Fed does not push rate hikes too far, for example, then that long end inversion will just simply dissipate and go off into the ether and nobody will ever care about it. So because they're all Fed centered all the time, what they're really saying is long end inversion may not end up in short end inversion, therefore recession and those types of scenarios if the Fed does the right thing. The Fed has the power to interrupt this signal that's being sent by long end inversion. And if the Fed gets it right, the long end inversion, you really could just ignore it because the Fed will fix it all in the future, which I mean, I can already see you're kind of rolling your eyes and shaking your head because when has that ever happened? Uh, is that a rhetorical question? Uh, you've caught me there, Jeff. I'm not sure. The, I want to go over two more things in this video, one being uh, where the rates are recently, as well as sort of more of a philosophical question of this study as to whether or not there's enough time. If we look at these short-term yields, and shouldn't we be looking at the long-term yields so that we have more time to react? But Jeff, I want to go over the short-term yields first and the more recent yields, especially after all the volatility that took place recently after the recent uh, results of the Consumer Price Index, which is at a super, super 40-year high. Jeff, when you wrote this article, you said, quote, yield curve inversion has reached the 52-week Treasury bill, meaning the longest bill rate this longest bill rate, so the longest bill being 52 week, is right now a whopping 10 basis points above the yield for the benchmark 10 year note. You, you wrote that on the 15th, is that right, Jeff? Well, I'm looking at this right now. Right now, as we're talking, the 52 week note, 3.13, and the 10 year, 2.9. Two, 20 some basis points. What's happening? Well, the market's fluctuating back and forth, but we went through we went through a period where, given the CPI release this week, which was again new 40-year high, Fed's gonna have to raise rates, or the Fed's gonna raise rates even more aggressively. So you had a real swing in the short end of the curve, which, which uh, short end rates rose rapidly, including the 12-month bill rate, including the six-month bill rate which has moved way up too, but you also had a radical shift in the back end where uh, outside of a, a narrow period on Wednesday where the entire curve, all interest rates and all the curve moved up, from Wednesday morning on, there's been sustained bid in the seven year, the 10 year and on out down, down the curve because inversion is spreading further and further toward the front as the front end prices more rate, rate hikes and the back end prices 
something other than what would what would justify rate hikes. And so we have this inversion becoming deeper and deeper and the inversion itself becoming steeper in the wrong direction. And in fact, I think it's, uh, you, might, you might have to check this, but the, the six month bill is really close to the 10 year too. So getting back to our original premise here, uh, spoiler alert for the, anybody who didn't read the study, and then a red flashing warning to all of those economists looking at the short end of the yield curve for inversion, it seems like it's coming. It seems like we're almost there where the short end is starting to join the long end. And so the long for hope that the Fed is going to create the right magic number of policies or the right mix of policies to interrupt whatever is causing this long end inversion, the chances of that happening are dwindling by the, by the day really, because the inversion continues to spread closer and closer to the front. And as you just mentioned, Emil, it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper, which is simply the market saying, we're more and more confident, more and more certain that what, what's, go, what, what's worrying the back end of the yield curve is actually going to happen. Jeff, we're pulling up a graph right now for the audience so that they can see spreads of different maturities. And this is the last point I wanna focus on here. You've got long-term yields compared to two year, five year, seven year. So we've got a tens two, we've got a 35, right? So I'm not saying it right, but the 30 year yield compared to the five year yield the 10 year yield compared to the two year yield, the 10 year yield compared to the seven year yield. And each of those seem to inflect downwards in early 2021, mid 2021, maybe March, let's say May, they started narrowing, okay? But then you've also added a graph here, the one as a proxy for this study. And this one is the three month two year. And Jeff, this one didn't start inflecting downward until gosh, what April of 2022. So that's my big complaint about yeah, this right. study is that if we do use the long end, which they're telling us, meh, it's not as predictive, we would have gotten a year worth of a heads up warning, whereas now it's saying uh, imminent collision, put on your seatbelt. Well, what, what good is that? I know that's not just a, a complaint, Emil. That is the problem, right? Because they're saying throw out all that good information because, or not, not only that, it's throw out all that good information because the Fed can save you before it's valuable, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're saying ignore the yield curve, put your faith in Jay Powell. That is really the proposition here. It's only the when the short end of the yield curve inverts and says, oh, Jay Powell screwed up. That's when we're supposed to worry. But by then, it's too late. As you said, you get this progression, this warning. A year ago, the yield curve started flattening, saying, we don't like what's going on here. We know things are changing, consumer prices, but we don't think the economy is all that great, and the potential for next year isn't that good either. And so the long end has warned all along, this wasn't inflation, was likely to a supply shock, recession risk, deflation risk, all of these things. And we're supposed to just ignore all that because Jay Powell, one of these days, might actually get it right. And in between the long end and short end inverting, then uh, maybe the Fed could actually come up with a magic number, which it's never been able to do yet. It seems preposterous for anybody with an honest and, and open-minded position, but yet it makes perfect sense from somebody in the academic world because to them, this is not just... Uh, maybe this is, well, it's the Fed. The Fed is obviously going to get this right, even though history shows they never have before. They'll probably get it right this time. And that's really the issue here. Do you want to put your money on Jay Powell or do you want to put your money in the long end? And as I talked about in the article, time and time again, this is what happened. The short end doesn't invert until the thing is almost upon us, which is by then it's usually too late. It has echoes of Greenspan's conundrum, doesn't it, Jeff? Where... Absolutely. The market's doing something strange. And by strange, I mean, it's not listening to me. The deity <laughs> at the center of the monetary universe, chairman, chairwoman of the Federal Reserve. It's not agreeing with me. <sighs> what a strange market. It's a conundrum. Or we can just ignore it. But as you've, you know, as you've explained, we don't need to pay attention to it because we can manipulate and change the future. Well. 
that's the conceit that really that's and conceit. sometimes it, it really does it's more than frustrating it's actually bothersome because it's it's an irrational conceit it's unbacked by any type of observation or history it's simply conjecture and in many ways it's pure sophistry it's even worse than all that so sometimes it really gets under your skin when you see kind of think things like that and then you do the historical review you do the evidence you you put together all the charts and the markets and everything it's like how can you still say these things and pretend and say them with a straight face because it just flies in the face of everything it, it's really pure sophistry and we're starting with a predetermined conclusion and trying to make everything fit inside of it. Jeff that. where can people get a hold of you and your work? They can get a hold of you and our work together at Eurodollar University it's eurodollar.university that has information about everything that we're doing the new and improved Eurodollar University which we'll talk about a little bit more as we go forward into the next weeks and months over time they can find me and if you're an investor looking for investment strategies I'm partner with Stephen Van Meter for Atlas Financial, as we said. You can find the investment stuff at PortfolioShield.net. The research products that we mentioned at the outset, those are at www.marketsinsiderpro.com. And there's more stuff all the time. We're, uh, we're going to get together. We're going to put together our first membership video. We're going to do Q&As. If you're interested in, in signing up for a membership, you can find that at eurodollar.university too.